Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Now, four weeks ago, I made a poll regarding which build you would like to see on the channel, and most votes were obtained by the nuclear power plant build for 1.12.2. So, here's the first step of this process, which is obtaining uranium fuel. So, we are going to grow our uranium using mystical agriculture and immersive engineering. It is going to be processed finally in the centrifuges, and we are going to get a fuel back. So, yeah, this is the setup, and without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So this whole build is divided into six equal chunks, each chunk having a different purpose. So these first two chunks will produce the raw materials, which is the uranium, fluoride and the sulfur. These next two chunks are for the chemical factory. And finally, we have the last centrifuging section, which will give us our fuel and the boiler turbine section for basically getting the coolant out of the chemical factories. So let's start with the very first step of raw material production, which is going to be obtained using the immersive engineering and mystical agriculture mod. So using the garden cloche, we are going to grow uranium and then it will give us uranium essence. So in here, I have used a total of 48 garden cloches. This is the exact number or basically the perfect number I found for a continuous line of production. So when uranium seeds grow, they will give us uranium essence, which you can see coming in the item ducts right now. This uranium essence will then go in a sequential fabricator, get converted into two pieces of uranium ingots. Now these uranium ingots will then go in a pulverizer where it will be converted into uranium grit or you can call it uranium dust and it will end up in the input grid for this chemical factory which when combined with sulfur will give us the yellow cake. So yeah that's how we are going to get uranium and uranium grit continuously. So as you can see the production is continuous that's why 48 is a pretty good number of garden cloches that you can use for a single chemical factory. Now this is a scalable setup. Also here are eight garden cloches for growing sulfur, but sulfur can be obtained like in very large amounts cause three sulfur essence gives us a total of eight sulfur dust, which is a lot. So you only need eight, which is also an overkill, but yeah, for the sake of uh, symmetry, I used eight. So here we have sulfur going in, giving us our yellow cake, but sulfur is also used to produce sulfuric acid, which will be obtained by combining hydrogen peroxide with sulfur dust. So this chemical factory produces three things, the hydrogen peroxide, sulfuric acid, and yellow cake. So yeah, and as you can see, the upgrades I have used is a speed three and an overdrive three upgrade. It doesn't use that much power like 80,000 HE per second. So yeah. That's that. And finally, the yellow cake, which we are producing, will end up in another chemical factory. Now, the sulfuric acid that we are producing goes inside this excavator or the large mining drill. And the bedrock ore is set to fluoride, which, as you can see, requires sulfuric acid. Now, fluoride will then go inside this shredder to give us the enriched version. And the enriched fluoride then will go in a centrifuge where it will give us the four pieces of fluoride. And we can use this fluoride in the second chemical factory in order to obtain uranium hexafluoride. So, but basically this thing needs to be controlled. That's why the redstone contraption is there. So yellow cake goes in here and fluoride goes in a second input grid. And when these two things are combined with water, it gives us a uranium hexafluoride, which goes in for the final step. Now for controlling, as I told you, I'm using a redstone control power switch. So here I have a basically strength 14 redstone connection going inside a comparator, which sees how much fluoride there is in a chest. And that redstone signal is then passed and it travels to what, the switch. So yeah, that's how you can control it, one way of doing it. And finally, all of the uranium hexafluoride goes into these 40 centrifuges. Now this setup right here, is basically the bottleneck of this build right now. I couldn't make it bigger because I was pretty busy with work for this whole week and the last week actually. But yeah, I am using 40 gas centrifuges for now. Each process or each 3600 millibuckets will give a single piece of 235 and 19 pieces of 238. So that's a lot of uranium 238 that you are gonna get. Now you will also get nuggets of uranium fuel which can be directly combined to get uranium fuel ingots. But for 235 and 238, I'm using a second separate sequential fabricator. So three pieces of 235 with six pieces of 238 will give us our uranium fuel ingots. And for this sequential fabricator, I would highly recommend using the augment of pattern. 
because you are going to produce a lot more 235 oh sorry 238 than the 235 so using that augment is pretty useful and all of the remaining or extra 238 uh, uranium ingots or the nuggets can basically we can get rid of them so pattern validation is the augment that i was telling you as it requires six 238 the six slots are basically for that and the remaining three slots are for 235 and in order to basically reroute the 238 i am using crash bin from industrial renewal along with the dense signalum plated item gun. Now what this does is it increases the path length. So whenever 238 comes, it will first try to go inside the sequential fabricator, but when it can't, then it will go inside the trash bin. So that's that. And finally, we have a coolant cycle. Now the coolant cycle is for the chemical factories, because in this version, the Elkator's version or the NTM extended, the coolant factories use, oh sorry, the chemical factories use coolant instead of water. So I'm using a heat exchanger for getting rid of all of the hot coolant and converting it back into the normal coolant and it is cycling through and we are getting some extra power from it. Now this whole setup right here, it is kind of like a self-contained setup because the amount of uranium fuel ingots that we are producing, it is enough to run to basically what level five nuclear power plants. So uh, you can run multiple of it if you increase the amount of gas centrifuges there are in there and I am going to do that. That is why I have not provided the world download link because this world is going to be modified yet. But this was just an idea of how you can build it in 1.12.2. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, then please do press that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out.